Simon Page reporting for Sportsview London. We were at McGuigan's gym in Battersea today, talking to middleweight Comrade Cummings. How are you, mate? I'm great, mate. I'm training hard and uh, looking forward to the next fight. Yeah, can't, can't wait to get out of there, mate. Yeah. Good, good. Um, tell us a little bit how you first got into boxing. I uh, started boxing when I was nine years of age. Uh, my father, his, uh, most of his brothers boxed, my brother boxed. Uh, so it was sort of in the family, so I was a chubby kid, I went down to the, <laughs> the gym when I was nine and uh, you know, I had my first fight within two weeks and uh, just talked to it really naturally and yeah. uh, just loved it ever since. Superb. And what's your, what's your first memory? What's the first thing you... My, f my first memory is going down to the gym, was, you know, once again, I was a chubby kid and uh, you know, I was training away and I said, oh, we've got a we'll fight for you, you know, with another lad and I yeah. took the fight and... They were sort of making a joke of it, thinking, ah, you know, just, you know, you know, <laughs> thinking, you know, oh, go, cool, get in there. And, but I got in anyway, and, I, and I, was, I remember it was really, it was on my toes, and I, was, I, just, picked, I just picked it up really quickly. And uh, I remember my trainer at the time saying, after the first round, well, just go out and do what you did in the first round. <laughs> yeah, it's so, uh, yeah, so I talked about it uh, really well, and I've been there ever since. Stuck in your mind that moment? Uh, that really stuck in my mind, yeah. I remember, you know, it was, just, it was one of the early moments in my career, and I just, 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 I can just numbered in there. I was, I'm 23 now in there, so it was, uh, it was quite a few years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, um, just before we go any further, just to clear things up, you, you're not from Belfast. Are you? I'm not from Belfast. Uh, it's been funny, you know, when I when I come I'm from Belfast, you know, but you know, I don't mind that. I'm from Northern Ireland. I yeah. live in County Tyrone, uh, that uh, Northern Ireland. I'm from uh, actually live in Coolen. So uh, that's where I'm from. I just wanted to clear that up because yeah. I get a, a lot of people coming up to me. Always oh, nice to have someone else from Belfast. So he's not from Belfast. No, they're claiming I'm in Belfast, but I'm almost, but just not quite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about your amateur career. Oh, well, quite a quite a good amateur career. And I had uh, maybe just under 200 fights in a row. 200. Uh, maybe only lost 10 or 12. Um, so I had a good amateur record. I had five national titles uh, through various age groups. Um, boxed all over the world uh, for Ireland. Uh, my first international for Ireland. I was 13 years of age. It was Ireland versus England in Ipswich, which I won. Um, maybe 50 caps for Ireland uh, through all age groups again. Uh, boxed in the European cadets, uh, world cadets. Uh, uh, the Europeans were in Hungary, the world were in Azerbaijan. Um, I won numerous multinational gold medals. I won uh, at senior level, I won uh, gold in the Vienna Cup in Austria. I won gold uh, back to back in the, in the prestigious 19 nation Tomer tournament uh, wow. in Finland two years in a row. Uh, out of six fights, I think I had four stoppages in the two years. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I won that and um, also. I competed in the World Series of Boxing. Um, I, com uh, I was uh, boxing for the Mexican Guerreros. Uh, five fights there, I boxed all over the world. I boxed in Poland, Azerbaijan, England, Kazakhstan, uh, Mexico itself. I, I lived wow. in Mexico. I lived in Mexico itself yeah. for a month. Trained at 7,000 feet above sea level at altitude. Uh, at the end of it, uh, I boxed Charles Potter, the 2008 Olympic silver medalist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pan American Games champion and world champion. Yeah. Also, and uh, I beat him every round in five rounds. I remember. I remember. What. I also I beat uh, Falco Florentino, the Brazilian who got a silver in the London Olympics. Yeah. I beat yeah. him in the Test Olympics. <laughs> so I beat him as well. So I beat two Olympic silver medalists. I was lucky not to go to the Olympics myself uh, through. Very no, I'm not going to start uh, complaining. You know, I, no. you know, it was a bit of a bit of corrupt, uh, bit of politics and sport. I'm going to leave it at that. I should have been there. I wasn't. Yeah. I moved on. Uh, and I'm here now. You are, mate. Yeah. <laughs> and, it, and it stands you in good stead. You, you turn over and you, you, you've nothing to fear now. You've I'm been all over the world. I've been there. I've been all over the world. I've mixed with the best through, uh, you know, through through all levels, through age groups, and um, it's it's really standing me. Now. And I know it will stand me. You know, I've got that pedigree schooling as an amateur, so I can bring that into the pro game, you know, Definitely. I'm already mixing sparring with some of the best pros out there and I'm, you know, I'm giving them lots to think about, so I'm only at one fight, I'm not going to learn to walk before I can run, but I believe in due time, I'm the middle of this, well, they know who I am. Without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, you touched on it briefly there, you, you, you fought in the uh, 
World Series boxing in Mexico. Um, tell us a little bit how you got into that, how that came about. Uh, the World Series came out. I, I, will, I always wanted to be a professional. That's always been my dream. People, you know, different objectives. They want to do this, they want to do that. But I've always wanted to be a professional. So I uh, seen it as a stepping stone to get me into the professional game, which it was exactly. That's how I was spotted. So uh, I, I was clever in my mind to, 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 to do that. So I, I knew that was the way of, you know, to do it for me. So which it was because I wasn't getting the chance to advertise myself on the big stage, i.e. the Europeans or the world where it should have been. But definitely, that's just it uh, uh, wasn't possible. So um, yeah, so uh, it came about. Uh, the, the, the Mexicans they, they had seen me on YouTube and they, they, they made me an offer. They, they wanted me actually the season before as well, but it just didn't work out for one reason or another. And yeah. uh, co a couple of other teams wanted me as well, but I believe the Mexicans as fighters, uh, you know, and just as I believe it was the right team for me. And it was, it was the, they loved me, they loved my style, my come forward style, and I jailed really well with them. Fantastic experience as well. Oh, but it was, it was out of this world now uh, to go to. It was, it was great to be, you know, mixed with some of the best, you know. Uh, had a very close fight with Dervinchenko, the two-time WSB champion. You know, uh, it was great. I thought it was a good fight. It was close. It was good, good learning experience for me. But um, to go to Mexico, to be out there on my own, learned a lot about myself. You know, to, you know, uh, living on my own. You know, simple things. You had to wash my clothes in the sink. I had to, there, was, there was no toilet paper. There was, there was cold water in the showers. You know, there was it wasn't it wasn't great for, uh, facilities. But uh, I made it do, and it made me made me mentally tougher as well as physically. And I think it was it was great to do that before I turned professional and moved to London because uh, I knew after after I did that I knew nothing was going to fail me. Definitely, and now you, you you come in against people that maybe aren't that uh, mentally tough, you know. And it yeah, it stands to me. You know, I, I've been there. I've been, you know, it was you know, it wasn't easy going out to, to live in you know there on my own for months. Nobody spoke English. You know, there was a uh, course. There was a complete uh, language barrier. The food you didn't know what you're eating. You just had you know you just had what, whatever there was provided for you, and you know so. That in itself, you know, stands to me, and it, you know, it made me, you know, know that I can stand on my own two feet, and uh, you know, I, I wanted to turn pro, and uh, I went to, I had one more amateur tournament after that, I boxed in the, the Palmer, which I won gold for the Irish team, and I believe I would have won, would have went and won the Irish seniors. You know, should have had them, you know, the last couple of years, but I, I know what I won them this year. Yeah. Maybe I went to the Commonwealth Games, which did well. I mean, I went to the Olympics, but that doesn't matter. Turn professional, the deal was there, and I knew I'm with a, a great team, and. Uh, you touched on it briefly there, beating the Cuban Olympic silver medalist Carlos Bantua. That really highlighted your potential. You yeah, that? I think people started. The, people had heard of me. They had seen me and they, they watched me earlier, in the earlier fights in WSB, and the, they were might have been impressed or they might have thought I was uh, a good enough lad. But uh, I already had beat the, the Brazilians, the uh, Olympic silver medalist, but no one really, you know, they didn't really see that or they didn't, you know, but. This fight was on the world stage. People were. It was quite a historic event as it was Cuban boxing as professional, so to speak, for the first time in, you know since you know, Castro banned professionalism, you know, for 15 years ago. So it was a, it was a big event, and uh, I jumped it, and I knew I wanted to fight him. And uh, once again, I think the Cuban took me lately, and uh, I didn't think him lately. I <laughs> <laughs> and it, sparring in Mexico must have been second to none. It was. It was fantastic. Uh, it was that was that's always one thing I found difficult is getting good sparring at home, not in England now, but uh, went over there and it was like starting school again. Uh, everyone wanted to go. Who, who's this? Who's this Irish kid? They, you know they couldn't speak, but I just knew they all wanted a piece of me. Yeah. Every day, uh, like Walter, Walter is like middles, middles, heavy. It's they all they just wanted to get in. Oh yeah, so they get in and I dropped a few guys, dropped a couple of bigger guys, and then you know it was like it was, a, it was like starting school again. But after a few days, they realised you know, so they started taking a bit. You know, they all wanted to you know, they knock me out. Yeah. But I knocked a couple of MGs out, and then after that, they got a bit of respect, and then then they started to like me, and they labelled me Mr. Dinamita. So that was, <laughs> <laughs> and then they got a bit of respect. You take that as a compliment. Yeah, I take that as a compliment. Yeah. yeah. And how long were you out there, roughly? You say? I was out there just under a month in total. Uh, I was out uh, about three and a half weeks before the fight. Preparing and then I stayed for a few days after the fight. So just rough, about a month, about a month in total. Yeah. Superb. And as we sit in now, you um, signing a superb deal with Cyclone Promotion, Barry McGuigan, and fighting at the Odyssey Arena on the 4th of um, April. 
Tell us how that came about, the offer from Barry and the team. Uh, well, it came about, uh, uh, Barry actually, I can, remember, I can remember coming home from the, the Tomer tournament in Finland, it was uh, late, it was November, it was November time, late November, and I just won gold. And we were actually, I just landed on the, the ground with the Irish team, and uh, I was getting off the plane, I turned my phone on, and uh, I remember uh, looking at my phone and I had a private, private mail, Right. From a uh, private t uh, Twitter message from Barry, and he said, uh, 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 Can I contact me uh, or could I have a number to contact you? So he, uh, I gave him a number and I, and I drew a phone. I was excited to think, well, I wonder what he's looking you know. And I, in the back of my head, I, I, th I thought I sort of knew what he, was, what he wanted, but I, I didn't jump to any conclusions. And I got home and then I spoke to Barry, and obviously it was very exciting for me. I was just with just one goal with the Irish team. And uh, so that hadn't even chance to it'd sink in, and then the boy rang me, and he, he, you know, he spoke to me and said he'd been watching me for years, yeah. and he actually wanted to send me like a year and a half before that. So it was phenomenal to get on, uh, to get this, uh, you know, these great words from him, and he we spoke, and uh, came over to Madam, Madam Person, he showed me around, and met the team, uh, all the second emotions, a bit of a train machine. Yeah. But I didn't at this stage I hadn't signed, I wasn't I didn't even I didn't even tell anyone. I just came over, I met I didn't I just wanted to make my own decision and I came over and I met everyone and uh, made me a fantastic offer and yeah. uh, I knew it was the right thing for Connor Cummins to, to sign the paper. <laughs> Definitely. It looks right, it looks right I must say. Um, you touched on it briefly there, you're trained by Shane McWigan. How are you adapting to Shane's style of teaching and coaching? I think I think uh, we're gelling really well. You know, she, you know, she and some people you know say she's only young. You know, she's only young lad. You know, can he take you to where you want to be? And that's a world title. And I believe he can. He's a, an exceptional coach. Uh, he's a fighter himself, boxer himself, uh, at, at, a, at a very decent level. But uh, really, really good coach. You know, I presumed he was a good coach training to our problem, but now training with him. And listening to him, you know how good he really is. You know he's he's, uh, he's already up my game. You know, and I can only imagine with more time. You know how much more he's going to bring out to me. My definitely, armor. definitely. And give us an idea of your diet. <laughs> come over when you're training in London. Well, that was probably always my one downfall. But my diet uh, could always be a bit better. I always trained hard, but now with my diet's uh, matching my training, etc. It's uh, quite uh, high protein, high fats, low carb, um, a lot of meat, a lot of fish, a lot of veg. It's quite simple. That's it. That's um, uh, that's really it. We eat some uh, low carb, maybe it's some some uh, some clean carbs and eat some uh, sweet potato or right. Yeah, but um, quite high protein, high fat. Is that sort of loosely based on the paleo? Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 paleo, but uh, it is paleo, but. Shane uh, listens to us. Listens to listen to me and Carl. We are we are sort of on different diets. We it's it's more or less paleo, but he tweaks it slightly to yeah. suit to suit us. Superb. And training along, as you mentioned, there training alongside Carl Frampton. Now, is that up to your game? In uh, any way, without you a say? shadow of a doubt. You know, uh, whenever I get the chance, I watch Carl spar or you know I watch him in the past with Shane, and it really makes me uh, up my game. You know. He's on cusp of win the world title. He's a he's a superstar. You know, he he you know everyone in the UK and Ireland and soon the world will know Carl Frampton. So you know, it really makes me up my game. I have to you know I'm training alongside him. I'm doing everything the same as him. He's maybe doing more around sparring, but besides that, I'm staying with him and it's really it's really bringing me on. You know? Competitive. Oh, it's competitive. Yeah, we <laughs> we get competitive when we're doing the, the sprints and the weights and stuff. But uh, no, it's good. It's all it's all good banter. And whilst in training camp um, in London, you also live with Carl. Yeah, we at the minute we're staying in uh, Shane's Shane's apartment. Uh, I think we're moving into a new apartment after this fight. But at the minute we're we were sharing a room where our beds are <laughs> safe to say, you know. So we're living with each other day in day out, and he's he's a great lad to be to be about. He's he's, he's so humble and he's great for advice. You know, he's been there, done that. And many days, I, you know, I, I, you know, I don't feel great, or I need a bit of you know, advice or wisdom. You know, he's always there, and uh, a really, really nice guy, and uh, just great to be living with. And being away from home as well, I mean. Exactly, and you know, he's just been. He, some days I, you know, you, you know, I find it hard 
what happened with my family, my girlfriend, etc. Then I look at this kid uh, that's just got married, has a little uh, girl ringing him saying, Daddy, I miss you. you know, that, that's hard. You know, so, so it gives me a wake up call that, you know, okay, you know, it's tough for me, but it's just tough for him. And uh, just we're together, we're training together, we're in camp together, and it, it, uh, I, think it, I think it works. Definitely. And I asked, um, I asked Carl the same question. And he, he gave me an enlightening answer. Does he have any bad habits? Carl? Uh, I don't know if I can say this on camera, but uh, say what you say want, want. Um, he's an absolute stinker. He never stops farting. I don't know uh, <laughs> if, it's, if it's the diet or what it is, but he, uh, he's, he's, he's a fart machine. His nickname should be Charlie the Farter Frampton. <laughs> he does not stop morning, noon, and night. Uh, you know it's funny. Like I, I don't care. You know, but uh, yeah. you know, he apologizes. You know, he, it's it's just it's it's funny. You know, it's humorous. <laughs> and you, um, we touched on it earlier. You made your debut at your call last month against the tough Latvian Andres Loginops. Um, how would you say that performance went? Uh, I think the performance went well. I, I'm not going to lie. I wasn't completely happy with myself. Um, you know, me as a person, I'm, I'm better. Faxness, I like to always, uh, you know, I won well, I won the four, four rounds easy. Um, I was maybe trying to please it a little bit too much. It was, uh, you know, with the, you know, and people were watching, expecting big things, and I was maybe trying to knock them out a little bit too much and loading up. But uh, I heard him early, and he didn't want to fight back. I mean, these guys go into their shell, you know, it's, it's, it's just like hitting a punch back, you know, so it's, you know, so. I think I think I won well. I was ha happy, happy enough. Um, and, but you know, I've, I've even up my game since that, and uh, I need more. I'm six round now, and I think I think come Odyssey, you'll see, you'll see the way we've turned out. Definitely. <laughs> if that had have gone another two rounds, I think mm. one more round. I've had a more half half round. We're talking about there, but you know, got the win. That's the main thing. I was, um, as you know, we were actually at the, the your debut, and thought you were very unlucky having a point deducted. Oh, and a yeah. riff that looked Dude, like I, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't really like the ref. I thought he was, he liked the sound of his own voice. You know, he was, you know, he was shouting and sort of giving off with this and the other, and he was you know, making noise when he had no call to. You know, he, and mm. uh, I wasn't a big fan of him, but you know that stuff doesn't matter. You know, he was, you know, he gave you, he took a point off me. I think he just wanted to do that. Just, but I did hit him on a wee bit low one of the times, and I, I generally didn't mean it. I said, you know, sorry, but. He gave me a big deliver and he went down and he took a break and that that was also one of the factors why he, he sort of probably went the distance because he got a he got a minute break there where I had him on the I had him on the run, you know, spot you know, he got the job done. What did you think of your call? I thought it was cool, it's like uh, you know, it was like boxing in uh, like Ulster Hall in Ireland, it's like a small sort of small uh, compact hall, it's like uh, you know, it's sort of a, you know, a cool venue for you know, for local, you know, fights in uh, England, and it's, it's always running shows, and it was great atmosphere. It was great to have my debut there, and I'll, I'll forget it. You know, it was cool. Special. Uh, you, as you spoke earlier, your next fight is at the Odyssey Arena on the fourth of April on the Frampton Cazares undercard, which is six three-minute rounds. Yeah. Do you know anything about the opponent? Yeah, well, we, we've um, we, we made the we offered a fight till uh, a guy I can't say his name because we, I don't know if it's confirmed, but. Um, Whoever the team gets for me, I know it'll be the right fight, and uh, it doesn't really matter. I'm not really worried about who it is. I'm worrying about uh, preparing myself as best I can, and you know, I know the level of mark, and it won't matter who the bottom with. I know six rounds, I'll do the job. And your preparations for the fight, everything's gone to me today. Preparation has been absolutely, you know, supreme. It's I, I, this is a big statement, but I would I could easily say I'm probably. In the best shape of my life. You know, that's a bold statement to put out there, but I would probably say easily in the best shape of my life. You know, I've been I've put in maybe, you know, just under 100 rounds spawn, maybe, you know, 80 to 100 rounds spawn. You know, I'm only, I'm only coming on, you know, I'm only going to the six rounder, so, uh, and I've been sparring quality opposition, and that's that aside, even my conditioning training, my strength training, sprints, you know, everything, my tackling work, everything's been top notch. Uh, thankfully, no injuries, no, I feel good. I still get an energy still there, so I really, really can't wait until the fight night. It's really special. Sorry, and your, your training camps, have they run back to back from your day board yeah. you to now? Yeah, um, I went home. I started camp on the 6th or 7th of January with Kjord. I think that's about 12 or 13 weeks ago. 
and we're training for the, the debut. Even we, the debut, put it this way, it was, we, we used to do this training session. I sparred even a couple of times the week of the debut, which you wouldn't do normally in a fight. We just treated the debut like, like, like training, like it was training. We went out, we sparred the week of the fight, we fought, took a couple of days off, back in with weights, weight training, and strengths, you know, just, just continued right through. So uh, we'll get, I'll probably take a couple, of, a couple of weeks off or a week off after this fight because I've had a, a long camp. But it, it took me a while to uh, adapt over it. And, uh, you know, it's a new game and um, I'm uh, learning every day. And of course. That, yeah, so. And you many people have absolutely no idea what boxers go through. Just give the people an idea of your training routine, your daily. Well, uh, you know, even training aside, it's, it's a lot of sacrifices, you know, it's... Uh, to be at this level, you have to completely dedicate yourself. You know, in every in every way. You know, like once again, we're over here, pardon me, in uh, England. Uh, we're training, eating, sleeping, boxing. You know, we get up in the morning. We do a uh, cure. Maybe we'll go before me, or I'll go before him. We'll do maybe an hour and a half of shin pads, uh, ten rounds of the pads. You know, he maybe do twelve rounds. I'll maybe do eight or ten. Uh, you know, we'll, Technical work, if we do all work, uh, go get a lunch. Uh, you have to cook it yourself. <laughs> uh, uh, buy the food, cook it, then we'll, we'll rest for maybe an hour or two. And then even we'll do our strength work or sprints, and it's re really tough sessions. And uh, then you go and you have your dinner and you go to bed and you repeat that for, for two or three months. At the, Grand up, guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And as you touched on the subject there, you're getting top sparring here. And um, as we spoke earlier, Against the lights of Andy Lee, mm -hmm. as, how does that feel? Well, it's a great confidence boost of me. Uh, you know, I always feel me as a person. I, I always up my game against the uh, better opposition. So, <clears throat> you know, you're not always going to be sparring the best and fighting the best. But it's good to be mixing them with them now and again. And I've, yeah, I've got I've did, uh, been doing plenty of sparring Andy and getting on very well. And it's a great confidence boost of me to be to mixing that level so early. Somebody that was. Uh, you know, Fought for a world title at the same with same those as me, so it's a great confidence boost. Fantastic. And you obviously now guided by Cyclone Promotions and Barry McGuigan. How does that feel? Well, at the start it was, uh, it was a bit surreal, um, but uh, it's, I'm settled in now and it's, you know, I'm with a, with a fantastic team once again. And uh, Barry's my manager, you know, he's, he's been there, he's done that, he won a world title, so. It's you know I couldn't be with, you know I, I feel I couldn't be with a better with a better team and I'm very humbled to be here. Superb. And what would you say is your aim for boxing this year? Well, this year my aim is to be to have at least six fights. I had one fight. Yeah, I think it's very realistic. Six wins or, or more, if I, whatever I have, and uh, train hard and learn. I'm only uh, only 22. I want to learn the full game. I want to, I don't want to be. Oh, Rushed than I won't be. You know, uh, you know, some of these guys come in and the uh, you know, big ears, and they, they just go step too early. But I know what I want to do. But I'll take my time, and I'm, you know, the team around me will look after me, and they'll, you know, they'll, do, they'll do a good job. Of but uh, just stay busy, train hard, and learn. You mentioned there um, six fights. Will that be in Belfast or chance of a bill uh, in the UK? I, I, Maybe in the UK, but we want to fight as uh, much at home as possible. There will be smaller hall shows. We're looking at uh, my next fight, uh, me being a sort of co headline with another maybe title fight in Ulster Hall. So that'll be, that'll be good. So Superb. And what would you say your long term goal in boxing is? My long term goal is uh, definitely to win a world title. That's why I turned pro. If I, if I didn't believe I, could, I, couldn't, if I, believe I couldn't win that, I wouldn't have turned pro. You know, that, that's what I want. That's where I believe it'll be. It's it's a big statement, but you know, from his nine years of age, I've dreamed about it, and I won't stop till I get there. And as you, we spoke about earlier, you enter a red hot middleweight division. Have you anything to fear, or you go in? I don't. Confident? I don't fear. I don't fear anyone, especially you know, you know, middleweight division. Middleweight division, as, as you said, is, is red hot. Um, but I don't. I don't fear anyone. You know, I'll, you know as I come through the ranks. They'll fear me whenever <laughs> when I start building up uh, and uh, I get the face on my belt. But say I've got the good the good amateur background there, so we're taking one fight at a time. You know, I'm still learning. You know, it's it's, it's a new game, but um, no, I don't fear them, and uh, I'm looking forward to all the chances ahead. 
Fantastic. And a standout moment in your career so far, would you say? The standout moment, um, I'd say term fashion. I'd say I was signing the paper and uh, knowing what a fantastic team I've joined and uh, living my dream. I've never been happy. Uh, people or maybe some even close people around me thought, you know, maybe it wasn't the right time, I was really young and it was uh, a bit of a gamble, but I knew in my heart this was the right team and the right, right place to be and uh, I'm loving it. Lovely day. <laughs> Fantastic. And what would you say the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Stay humble. Stay humble, you know, it's it's uh, a lot of this the, the sort of the, the tension and whatever you want to call it. Uh, comes with the game, especially you know, it can go to people's heads. But uh, uh, we're all, you know, we're all human, and you know, everyone's different. And uh, you, you do have, it's been really has been mind blowing the support and uh, the, encur the encouragement that I've received since the term fast. It really makes me train harder, and it, it's uh, it's uplifting that so many mm. people could you know get behind me and uh, but just just stay humble and keep the feet in the ground and work hard. Super. Who's your favourite fighter of all time, and why? Um, you know, it sounds a bit, I don't know what do you call this, but uh, it's, it's Mike Tyson, you know, I just uh, I love Mike, uh, love the style, I uh, love his aggression, you know, I like the way, you know, we like to take fighters out there, you know, and um, I like them, I think, you know, he was, you know, he, he was what he, he was, you know, he didn't, he didn't uh, try to be fake, you know, and uh, sometimes he got him in trouble, you know, but I, I, I know, I just, I love the style, I love his uh, ferociousness, and uh, Knockout power, I thought it was, it, was, it was fantastic. I mean, watching him as a kid, and I just uh, I thought it was, it was brilliant. Sticks in the mind, yeah. Best fight you've ever seen? Best fight, that's a tough one. Um, best fight I've ever seen would be probably Mickey Ward and Gaddy the third time. What a what a scrap! Probably you know, answer. Two, two warriors going to the battle for the distance. Great fight. Favourite film? Favourite film? Uh, it's a hard one, but I love a good film. Uh, it's uh, maybe maybe seven, seven. The film seven. With right, seven yeah. Days, so Brad, Brad Pitt. Uh, favorite food. Favorite food. No, in camp or out of camp. <laughs> Both. <laughs> My favorite food in camp is probably uh, fried fried turkey and coconut oil with some like green beans and maybe a little bit of sweet potato mash. Uh, out of camp, probably. Yeah, probably a bit of Chinese food or maybe, maybe a bit of steak and chomp, pepper sauce, you know, whatever. <laughs> Easy please, so I am. What's your favourite song? My favourite song? Uh, it's a difficult one, I'm pretty sure. Like, uh, like uh, Queen, I like, uh, like Guns N' Roses, I like uh, CDC, yeah, it's hard to pick one. Like, Easy please, like dance music, I like. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, favourite band? Favourite band? I would say probably Back Queen, yeah. As many young, uh, someone, many young people look up to, um, what advice would you give people that have no direction in life and are unsure of their future? Well, I would say to never give up, you know, uh, we, we, you know everyone's got struggles in their life and, you know, and some, you know, it's people uh, can go one way or another in life, you know, and uh, just uh, never give up and whatever, whatever that may be is, uh, you know, we'll have bad days, we'll have good days and uh, just, just motor on and you'll get there in the end. What is your routine on fight day? Fight day, uh, I'll get up, I'll have uh, a good breakfast, then I'll maybe go, uh, go watch a bit of TV, relax, uh, then I'll go for a walk, listen to a bit of music, just zoom out. Uh, go have a nice big lunch and then be laid out for an hour, sleep or maybe listen to a little bit of music and then get my, my bag packed, I'll maybe snack on something before I go to the fight and uh, I get in the zone and when it's, when it's fight time I'm, I'm all business. No superstitions? I don't really know, I think when I was younger I was a little bit superstitious but I think I've grew out of that, um, uh, you know, if you play with your head about that, you know, so I just try to avoid that as much as possible. Definitely. Leaving the dressing room on your way to the ring, what's going through your mind? Uh, well, as I say, I get really in the zone, and uh, you go, you go in the, you, know, you go in the box, and you know, I get really focused, and uh, you know, I think, you know, this this guy's trying to beat me, this guy's trying to, trying to you know, damage my career or damage my, you know, so I get really, get, get really motivated and uh, get uh, myself ready for battle. 
Superb. And how would you describe the atmosphere of the Odyssey Arena? Uh, well, when I was at George's last fight, I had no idea that uh, his next fight, I was going to be with the same team as him and boxing on the building. You know, it was out of this world. It was uh, electric. I've been to all around the world watching the boxing, Mexico, America, England, you know, and nowhere has compared to it till Belfast. It is absolutely electric, and I can't wait to be fighting and be a part of it. If you weren't a boxer, what do you think you'd be? If I weren't a boxer? Yeah. Besides a model. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, I'd probably say something to do with training. I love, I love training. I love fitness. Uh, maybe a personal trainer or be sure, or chef so I can sell food. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a massive change from home to coming over to London. How are you adapting to that change? A uh, massive change, you know, coming from a uh, small town, uh, Coal End, uh, in uh, north of Ireland. Um, it's different worlds, really, you know, but I'm um, settling in well. It's, it's, you know, it was, it was like starting school again. Uh, new people, new surroundings, new home. But I'm settling well and I'm, I'm, I'm loving, loving my time. I'm moving away from boxing for a minute. What do you do in your spare time? Spare time, I like to relax. Um, I've started trying to read, I'm not, I've never read a book in my life, but since I've been more in London I've tried to, to read a bit more and uh, I, I love watching a film or maybe a, like, a, you know, like a sitcom or a, you know, a, a, or a box series, you know, um, so just, just chill out, watch a bit of TV and try and get my mind away from boxing while, I'm, while I can until it's next time to train again. And with young fighters in Belfast coming through and again looking up to people like yourself, what advice you give to those young fighters? Train hard, train hard. You know, it's just it's, boxing's a tough game, and uh, leave no stone unturned. Uh, if you want to, if you want to be a boxer, you know, dedicate your dedicate yourself to your craft because you know you have to be complete, one hundred percent committed to this game. It's it's not a it's not like football. You can't behind hide behind another man. You know, dedicate yourself to your to the game, mentally, physically. You know, work hard and you know. You reap what you sow. If you, you know, if you work hard, you, you get the results. Definitely, comrade. Listen, I won't take up much more of your time. Thank you for talking to us today, and wish you all the best on the fourth. And Thanks I'm sure you'll much. be winning. Good morning, Sam. Thank, Thank you. you. This is Simon Page reporting for Sports View London.